For more than a thousand years, the Silk Road linked the East and the West. The Silk Road was not one route, but a network of smaller roads. The two main empires connected by this network were the Han and Roman empires. And it was not just goods, but ideas that traveled along the Silk Road. This video highlights the origins of the Silk Road, goods traded along the Silk Road, dangers along the Silk Road, cities of the Silk Road, and civilizations of the Silk Road. Topic number one is the origins of the Silk Road. For the Silk Road to be successful, traders needed to feel safe traveling down it. The military victories of the Han drove back nomadic peoples such as the Xiongnu. This led to the opening of trade routes to the West. Another event that led to the success of the Silk Road was in 138 BCE when Zhang Qian was sent to convince the West to join the fight against the nomads north of the Great Wall. Zhang Qian brought back information about places like Persia, India, Syria, and Rome to the Chinese emperor and his court. Topic number two is the goods traded on the Silk Road. Why was silk an important item for trade? First, it was valuable because only the Chinese knew how to make it. However, around 500 CE, the West had figured out how to make it too. Remember, silk is made from the cocoon of the silkworm, so basically silk is made from bugs. The Romans had a secret product of their own. This was glass. The Chinese figured out how to make glass around the same time. Glass products included trays, vases, necklaces, and small bottles. Besides these items, the Chinese imported fine dishware called china, jewelry, and cast iron products. In return, the Chinese valued horses, jade, furs, and gold from places like the Kushan Empire of Central Asia. From India, products like cotton, spices, pearls, and ivory were exported. And from the Middle East civilizations, perfumes, cosmetics, and carpets were exported. Topic number three is Silk Road dangers. A traveler along the Silk Road encountered many dangers and this usually depended on the terrain the person was in. One danger were bandits who attacked travelers between the cities of Dunhuang and Kucha. In the desert, besides the heat as a danger, travelers had to worry about sandstorms that could bury them alive mirages that would fool travelers into losing their way. In the mountains, such as the Pamir Mountains, people would get altitude sickness and experience headaches, dizziness, and ringing in the ears. Sometimes in the mountains, packs of animals would slip and tumble down the cliffs. Also, travelers in many areas along the Silk Road would have to fear wolves, lions, snakes, and vultures. Topic number four, Cities of the Silk Road. The Silk Road started in Luoyang and Chang'an, China. It ended in the port city of Antioch, Syria. Antioch was located on the Mediterranean Sea, and from this port, goods could be transported by ship to other parts of Europe and North Africa. The eastern part of the Silk Road went from Luoyang to the city of Kashgar. From Luoyang, travelers went to the city of Dunhuang and had to pass near the Gobi Desert. From here, traders could go north of the Taklamakan Desert through the oases of Lulan and Kucha, or south. Kashgar is in a city in China's western region today. It's in the Xinjiang region of China. Kashgar was considered the center trading point on the Silk Road. In Mesopotamia, an important stop was Tesafon. This city is now part of modern-day Iraq. From Tesafon, travelers passed through the Syrian desert and finally reached Antioch and the west. Topic number five, Silk Road civilizations. The main civilizations connected during ancient times were the Han Dynasty of China and the Roman Empire in the west. The main enemy that impeded the trade on the Silk Road were the nomads of the north. They were known as the Xiongnu and could have been the Huns as they were known in the West, or a similar group of related nomadic horsemen. Another civilization along the Silk Road was the Kushan Empire. It encompassed much of Afghanistan, Pakistan, Nepal, and northern India during the ancient period. Of course, the Persians were along the route of the Silk Road towards the West. The Royal Road connected Susa to Sardis. This road system was established 
by the Persian ruler Darius during the Achaemenid Empire and predated the Silk Road by 300 years. As you can see, the Silk Road affected many civilizations during the ancient and medieval period. It was filled with dangers but provided many opportunities to traders and civilizations that benefited from it. If you are interested in more ancient history, watch some of my other videos.